Our next guest, Shayi Brown, is the first Nigerian to have a comedy special on Netflix. The stand-up comedy special titled Nigerian American chronicles his life as an immigrant while he attempts to change the narrative of Nigerian Americans through highlights of the lives and contributions of prominent names to the world. Welcome to the morning show, Shayi. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Good to have you. Wow, I love your glasses. I know. I mean, on a There's Sunday morning. So much morning. swag on a Sunday morning. Right? <laughs> we have to represent you. Yes. Right. <laughs> Representing the Nigerian Americans. Now, you are the first Nigerian to have a comedy special on Netflix. How does that make you feel? Um, it's still kind of surreal right now. I'm still like, uh, I don't know, uh, just walking on clouds right now, you know. Um, and also, it's a privilege to be on the same uh, streaming platform like uh, the likes of Chris Rock, Kevin Hart, you know, Dave Chappelle. So, yeah, I f it feels great to be there, you know, and representing well, Nigeria. Congratulations. Definitely. You. Can you tell us about the, the concept of Nigerian American? I know in OG's introduction there, she talks about it being a, a story of your own personal experience of immigration. So if you could give us a bit more of the, the background on, on this comedy show. Well, you know, I, I realize that, uh, you know, most times when I introduce myself to uh, a lot of Americans, that once they say, where are you from? And I said, Nigeria. Like, oh, are you the prince who sent me an email? <laughs> and I realized that, is that all you know about us? You know, um, and the longer I stayed in America, and I realized that um, there are actually more Nigerians doing positive stuff in America than, you know, what the Western media portray. So as a comedian, I'm also a social commentator. And, I, you know, I felt it was my duty to make sure that I set the record straight while doing my craft. So that was, you know, the story behind Nigerian America. And that's what Nigerians in America are called. So I just titled it Nigerian America. So, you know, we're talking about us and what we bring to the table. And I tell them that, look, I realize that we're the most educated ethnic group in North America. And we have the highest number of black doctors. So that means if all doctors of Nigerian descent in America go on strike, the medical sector will crash. So I just let them know that, they just know that. You understand? So, you know, that's part of what, what you know, prompted this. Yeah, well said. Well, talking about the background of your comedy special, we have a short clip. Let's take a quick look at that before we continue. And that's why, you know, I tell Americans, if you're American here, that, you see, because of how we are brought up and because of our environment, I noticed that uh, our love languages are different. Americans, you know, you guys love flowers. You love going for a walk. You love looking at the sky. You love romantic things and poetic things. You see, that is good when you have not suffered. You understand? Having the mind to look at things that are not and calling them as they are. And those kind of romances, sweet. You understand? Now, I want you guys to take your time to look at my legs. You notice that they are not straight. This is not how I was born. Have you heard about an African student so walking 20 miles to school every day and 20 miles back? So you can imagine after I've done that for 20 years and I come to America, all in the name of romance, say, honey, let's go for a walk. Walk you there. So I should still be walking. Why do you think I came to America? Primary school to secondary school, I walked. Secondary to university, I walked. Even when I was going to the embassy, I walked. Coming to America, I could not afford the total flight. I walked to Morocco. Before I enter boats, then the boats are not entering the plane to come to America. And I said, honey, let's go for a walk. Shay, that was hilarious. I mean, that right there just encompasses the whole experience of a, a true Nigerian uh, American. Now, um, if we were to just uh, talk about your background, you were a former host of uh, Lagos Lottery TV game show and an actor. Now, why did you decide to settle down with comedy? And do you still act? Um, comedy has always been part of me. Um, I grew up in a household where, you know, I had a father who, you know, made everything hilarious. And it was always something I always wanted to explore. So it wasn't until I got to America that I had a chance to really take it full time because, you know, um, it was while I was waiting for my papers, you know, to, you know, really, you know, come true. And I had six months on my hand. I'm like, okay, right, let me just, you know, seize this opportunity and start working on it. And I chose Chris Rock then to understudy. So I understudied, I understudied Chris Rock, um, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, and Jamie Foxx. 
and you know mixed with my you know Nigerian background after studying the likes of the Alibabas, the you know basket miles the okay Bakasi and all that so you know the combination so I, I, I think I'm a product of the best of both worlds you know so yeah that's that's what uh, brought about the comedy side of me you know and I still you know I still do acting but not on the big big stage yet but you know just watch out for me you know it's gradually Hollywood come calling you know Hollywood is coming. I, you know, Hollywood is watching. You know, Hollywood is coming, right? Yeah, yeah, they're watching. Especially with the Stone Masters on, absolutely. See, when you talk about, you see, you see, there's banter there too. It looks like there's two comedians here today. Absolutely. When you talk about putting together a, a, a comic set, it's 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 a proper performance. You know, there's a beginning, a middle, and end. There's stories that you're telling, and along the way, you're making people laugh. And you know, making people laugh isn't very easy to do, especially when they've paid for it. You know, you get on the stage and you're there. You're supposed to entertain people for however long, but I'm, I'm guessing there must be a method to that type of madness. Walk us through that story of how you put your sets together and where you begin and if what you do when you feel like, oh, you know, I've forgotten my train of thought or how do I continue on? This is going against plan. What is that process like? Well, um, something I learned about comedy is um, there's an element of cultural relevance and that's very important. You know what Nigerians find funny? And not necessarily be what Americans would find funny. So what I tried to do was blend uh, both cultures. And you know, as an immigrant, you know, as an African immigrant in America, you know, Americans have you know a stereotype in their mind. You understand? So in in the process of trying to change the narrative, I'm also bringing the humor. On, you know, and I mean, look at what happened last year, the Black Lives Matter movement and all that. And in as much as I know that you know uh, there's a lot of racism in America. I also know that you know we need to advise you know our African American brothers how to deal with these people because we have experience of you know dealing with stuffs like that in Nigeria because you know why they had the Black Lives Matter we also had our NSAS movement you know and I just like I told them you know at a comedy show I said you know what I think Nigerians are the hope of the African American community and they were like why and I said I'll give you with reasons and you know I give them those reasons that you don't argue with somebody who has a gun because he will fight and run lives to fight another day, you know, we rather fight with our money, we don't argue with them, because you know what, I want to go back home to see my kids, you know, and you know, this, these are just, you know, factors that helped shape, you know, the way I, you know, I wrote my set, you know, and Americans, you know, it's either you, you build up your story or you just give them, you know, punchline, punchline, sort of punchline, and I saw Jimmy Fox's, um, I might need security, and I realized that from beginning to the end, it was non-stop laughter, and that was the element, I also wanted that element. In my stand-up, I want to make sure that from the beginning to the end, it's non-stop laughter. And I think we've been able to achieve that with the feedback we're getting. I am sure about that. You know, I got to beat my chest. Like, so yeah, we did that. <laughs> you know, that was what I was going to ask you. How has, um, you know, your style, how has being in America influenced your style of comedy? I am always so blown away by comedians. I always wonder how they come up with their scripting. I mean, how does that work for you? Look, let me tell you, it's one of the um, riskiest job. You know, you know when they talk about occupational hazard, stand-up comedy, I think it should be uh, listed number one or number two, maybe after, you know, health workers, because you don't know the audience, they don't know you, you know, the people you're performing, you're just, you just have to be confident that your material will cut across. And another thing I had in mind is, I want to do set that will have a crossover appeal. You know, I'm not just performing for Nigerians, I'm also performing for you know, the global uh, platform, global village, you know. So when you're performing for a global village, uh, your set has to, you know, be upgraded to have a crossover appeal so that somebody from Kenya can relate. Somebody from America will like, okay, all right, because, you know, they say, oh, they think that their yeah, $20 can feed 20 kids for 20 years. That's why when I came on stage, I came on stage in an outfit that speaks of the Nigerian Ephesi, you know, from head to toe. I said, I have to represent. Now, I took the glasses off, which is the same glasses, you know, I said, but you know, I have to come like this so that you guys know, because I remember the first American I met, she was like, you from Nigeria? Oh my God, have you eaten today? I'm like, do you have a restaurant? Why are you asking me if I've eaten? Because she just felt, you know, all Africans are hungry. So she was like, have you eaten? I'm like, you have a restaurant? I said, because I heard you guys are hungry. I said, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm from Nigeria, the sixth largest uh, export of oil, you know, most populous black nation in the world. We balling, man. We ballers. Most educated any group in North America. What you talking about? Mm -hmm. You know, I always like to brag. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Yoruba man. We like to brag. Me. You know? <laughs> so that element comes out. So that's why when I did the set, I could have won any other outfit. I'm like, I want to come out in my Nigeria regalia. I let them know that we are people of royalty. We have black excellence. Yeah. You understand? I, I wanted to touch on that, actually. Um, 
Now, your um, comedy also uh, talks about the achievements, the positive achievements of Nigerians and the image of Nigerians in the diaspora. Now, why is that important to you? All right. So, of course, as a fresh immigrant in America, so that was, you know, within a year that I got to America, um, that was when the Motalab issue happened and it was all over the news. And there was another time about uh, 200 Nigerians were arrested across the nation. It was all over the news. But, you know, the longer I stayed, I work with a lot of Nigerian professional bodies. There's Nigerian Lawyers Association, Nigerian Nurses, Nigerian Pharmacists, and especially AMPA, Association of Nigerian Physicians in America. They're so big, like, you know, it was them that made me realize that there are more Nigerian doctors than African-American doctors. Uh, and because they realize, of, uh, they, they realize that there's a, there's a shortage of African-Americans who are going into medicine, they actually created a, a mentoring platform for Africa, African-American uh, uh, students who would like to you know, study medicine, give them, giving them scholarships and the rest. Now, and I also realized that there's a particular city in America that don't have that negative um, you know, image that Americans give to Nigeria. If you're in El Paso, Texas, and you say you're in Nigeria, the first question they will ask you is, are you a doctor? Doesn't that feel good? They don't say, oh, are you the prince that wrote me that email? Or are you a scam artist? Or are you this or are you that? You know, I mean, positive image. And I'm, I realize that, look, why don't we talk about that? Why don't you guys just make that loud? Why don't you talk about Laolo New York? Why don't you talk about Dr. Lutoi? Why don't you talk about Dr. Badero? You understand, who is the only double specialist in the whole of America? Is a, a cardiologist and nephrologist. Why don't you talk about Dr. Olutoi, who brought out a three months fetus, operated on, on, on the spine of the baby, and took the baby back in the belly? Why don't you talk about that? That's the first person and the only person that has done that in the whole of America. Why don't you talk about me, Shea Brown? You understand what I'm saying? I just got mad. I'm like, we, we, we have to do something. I'm so mad right now. We have to do something. Talk about a positive image of Nigeria so that everywhere I go, I can lift my head up and beat my chest, the way I always do it, anywhere I go. Now you've done that three times, now we know yes. you do it. <laughs> he's definitely showed us that he's yes. proud. Let's talk about favorites. I mean, OG, I'm sure you have a favorite comedian. I have, I have a few, I have a few. In terms of American comedians though, I think, yeah, there's Cat Williams and Jamie Foxx, they're definitely hilarious. But uh, Shay, do you have a favorite comedian, Nigerian based and internationally based, who, who are they? Uh, you know, I, I mentioned um, the American comedians earlier on. Um, you know, Dave Chappelle is number one right now. Chris Rock, Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is, you know, hands down the most talented human being. Can sing, can can uh, act, and can do stand up. Uh, we have Kevin Hart, and um, uh, at the home front, of course. You know, when I was in college, at the prestigious. Uh, Premier University in Nigeria, University of Ibadan, up school, Nigerians Harvard, Nigerians Oxford. Um, you know, I have to hype my school. So yeah, <laughs> uh, when, I, when I was in UI, I used to come to uni like anytime Alibaba was performing to just to understudy the man, you know. And of course, Basketball is the biggest Nigerian comedy expert, you know. Um, also, Bovi, uh, Oke Bakas, you know, like, you know, the pioneers, TA and all of them, uh, Julia Sagu, um, all of them, all of them. I, I understudied all of them before I came down here. And Alibaba knew that I wanted to do this. Basketball knew I wanted to do this. Those are the only people. Then Bovi too knew. Then AY, you know, Ayamako, which, you know, close, very close friends. So these, these are like, you know, my favorites. All right, Shay. Well, we've had, uh, I wanted you to crack a joke, but we don't have much time. Congratulations on your <laughs> Netflix special. Thank you. I wish Thank you good you. luck in Thank your you. future endeavor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, you, you, you ladies look awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> hey, OG, you beat your chest. Ah. Is that beat your chest? <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Shay. <laughs>